What's up Thrashers and welcome back once again to the Thrash Maniac 99 YouTube channel and I am back with the first of two parts of Under the Radar for this week for September 9th. There was a lot of stuff and I mean a lot of stuff that came out this weekend and couldn't fit them all into one video so I decided to just split them in half. We're going to do three today and then three on Thursday. The three today are the three bigger ones. Then we're doing the more underground stuff on Thursday. And we're kicking things off with another one of the big releases that came out on the 9th, and that is Revocation with Nether Heaven. Of course, I have been a fan of Revocation ever since I first heard their album Deathless, I think in 2014, and then Great Is Our Sin 2016, and then the Outer Ones in 2018, and... Now we've been on like a four-year hiatus, which was the longest gap, I think, between albums. But we finally get a new Revocation album. And of course, like I said, big fan of this band. I like their approach to mixing technical death metal and thrash metal together. More so thrash in like the speed and some of the riffing. But tech death in terms of like the leads and the s chaos. So here on this album... It's a little bit different revocation than what I'm used to. You still get your token revocation elements to shredding leads, some technical play, thrashy moments. But here on this album, there seems to be a little bit more attention to melody and a little bit more attention to dynamics. Per particularly also in like the tempo shifts. Like, there's some more mid-tempo stuff going on on this album. Instead of just going out blazing speed the whole way through, you still get some blazing speed on this album, but not as much as you've become accustomed to with Revocation. Like I said, there's some more mid-tempo grooves going on, there's some more breakdowns, and the breakdowns on this album were the fucking tits. And then the chaotic speed was the fucking tits as well. Of course, the leads are always great because it's Dave Davidson. He's a hell of a guitarist. And his vocal delivery on this album, I would say, is up there amongst his best vocals I've heard from Revocation so far. Now, if I had to think of a complaint, possibly, there was a couple of moments in the album where they kind of just stayed in one place. But other than that... No complaints really whatsoever. I think this is another fantastic album. I give this a 9 out of 10. I've actually been needing to get some revocation in my collection and well, this won't be a bad place to begin that journey of getting revocation CDs. But yeah, 9 out of 10 for Nether Heaven. And now on to the second album for part one of Under the Radar this week and that is the sophomore effort from Warforged, The Grove Sundial. So yeah, this is a band that I knew already. I actually <clears throat> reviewed their debut when it came out in 2019. I thought it was a pretty solid debut with a lot of crazy guest stars on there from Christian Munzner from Obscura, Dallas Tuller Wade, formerly of Nile, among many other different players. Here, at least to my knowledge, no guest stars to speak of. And actually a much shorter album, like their debut was like well over an hour. This one is almost 45 minutes, so it seems like they might have learned some of the mistakes from their first album and that was going for too much into one debut album. So here, pretty much I think they trimmed the fat on a lot of these songs and decided to deliver a very heavy and atmospheric presentation. Of course, vocally, you get some brutal death growls, some, like, black metal screams, even some, like, hardcore screams. But musically, you get, like, fast blast beat stuff, some doomy stuff, some groovy stuff. It's just going all over the map, and in terms of the songwriting structures, definitely staying very proggy. Now, the production is actually really well done here. Everything is audible, layered perfectly. Nothing sounds like it's over top of each other, and sonically it sounds great. Really the only complaint that I could have about this album is I thought some of the moments whenever they would kind of explore a little bit, I thought got a little bit boring at times, but aside from that, this is a really damn good sophomore effort. I don't think it's as good 
as her debut, though it's heavier than the debut, I still think this is a really good album. I give this one an 8.5 out of 10. Warforged definitely are on the verge of something big here with their progressive blackened death metal sound, so 8.5 out of 10. And now for the final album for part one of this week's Under the Radar, and that is the uh, another sophomore effort, this time from Swedish progressive death metal band An Abstract Illusion with their album Woe. This is a band that uh, I've heard the name come up in conversations, most particularly with my Four Horsemen podcast co-host Hannah Klein. She's a huge fan of of their debut Illuminate the Path and never checked out this band until this new album because I knew Hannah would be like oh you guys should check this out so I was like eh this might be something cool and boy I was surprised like atmosphere like somberness heaviness it's like basically everything that I love about progressive death metal just all into one album this is about an hour long, so it's a long album, and there are songs that are like 10 minutes or more longer on here, but man, all these songs are just beautifully crafted, just kind of like, if I were to put this in like simplest terms, think of as if you hear Neoblivascaris, Old Opeth, Black Crown Initiate, Insomnium, and maybe a little bit of... Swallow the Sun in Morning, even, and just mash them all into one album. And you get this album right here from Abstract Illusion. Like, I love the textures that you get musically in terms of, like, how atmospheric it gets. But when it gets really heavy, it gets really fucking heavy. The blast beats on here were amazing. Some great riffing, whether it be, like, mid-tempo stuff or tremolos or doomy riffs. You get basically everything progressive death metal on this album. I think this is a possible top 20 contender for album of the year. This is a 9.5 out of 10. So far out of the Under the Radar albums I'm talking about, this is the strongest one so far this week. But we got two more to check out on Thursday. And, well, thank you guys for watching part one of this week's Under the Radar. Part two will be this Thursday. But until then, horns high. See you guys later. Better go in hell. What? Oh, my God. That was a fail. <laughs> Oh my god! Fuck that! <laughs> oh my god, I am such an idiot! That was the dumbest thing I've ever done in this fucking game! <laughs> Why? What was that? Was I colorblind for a second? What was that? <laughs> <laughs>